As a portrait photographer, this is one of the most important focal lengths for me. I never go out to photograph people without a 85 mm lens. And this lens is a completely new version, the G Master 2. It has been long awaited by many people, even most hoped for a 1.2 lens, but it's a 1.4. Sony's 85 mm 1.4 G Master 2. The original G Master was released eight years ago, and there were a few things that could have been improved, especially with the strong competition from Sigma. Sony's G Master was no longer the first choice in the shop shopping cart of your favorite photo store. Today, we will take a closer look of the new G Master 2, and I'm David, you are watching Their Vision, and let's go. But first, let's be honest, this thing will make you broke. How broke exactly? 2100 euros more broke than you are already. For a 1.4 prime lens, that sounds like a lot of money and it is, without a question. Especially since many people were hoping for a 1.2 lens. However, it's also a fact that the predecessor did cost 2000 euros when it was released in 2016, which would be almost 2,700 euros in today's money with inflation factored in. Okay, but the truth is the 85mm 1.4 G Master didn't sell well initially, so the price quickly and steadily dropped. Today the old version only costs 1,300 euros with the strong competition from Sigma's 85mm 1.4 DG DN coming at 200 euros less. For a lens that is overall clearly better than the first G Master. The new G Master 2, however, has its advantages. It's not significantly smaller, but a bit narrower and less bulky. But it has shed almost 200 grams in weight, now weighing almost as little as the mentioned Sigma lens. The filter thread remains at 77 mm and the design strongly resembles nearly all newer Sony G Master Prime lenses. Sleek, stylish, with an aperture ring that can either be clicked or run smoothly and you can lock it in position if you desire so. This is how I always said it. There's also an AF-MF switch and two buttons that you can assign functions to in the menu. The focus ring is nicely rubberized, pleasantly large and offers the perfect amount of resistance to me by turning. The build quality is very good, like you would expect from a G Master lens. The body is likely made of metal and of course, like all G Master lenses, it's sealed against dust and splashes with a rubber gasket at the mount. The difference compared to the first version of the 85mm 1.4 is not that big. The original one had an aperture ring already and also the customizable button. The real competition for this G Master 2 is more the Sigma than Sony's older version. The optical construction of the G Master 2 is much more complex now, with 14 elements in 11 groups and 11 rounded aperture plates. Unfortunately, the minimum focusing distance remains unchanged at around 80 cm. This is typical for such a lens. What's new here are the XD linear autofocus motor that drive the autofocus. The old 85 G Master still had older SSM motors that sometimes couldn't keep up as well as you'd like to. So while this wasn't an issue for portraits or weddings, it might not have been ideal for shooting active kids or dogs or sports. I don't have personal ex experience with the old G Master, but it's said that sharpness, especially at close distances, wasn't too impressive. For a lens where 80 cm is considered close focus, that's not ideal. With the GM2, on the other hand, it had no complaints about the lens's sharpness, even with tightly framed headshots. Everything is pin sharp, just as it should be. And a look at my usual sharpness test image confirms this as well. The lens is already impressively sharp in the center at maximum aperture 1.4. And there's also no visible sharpness drop off towards the edges of the frame. Stopping down to 1.8 or 2.0 reduces the vignetting at the edges a bit, but otherwise doesn't improve image quality noticeably, since sharpness at 1.4 is already exceptional. Contrast and color reproduction is also spot on. I'm personally a big fan of Sony's 1.4 prime lenses. 
the 24mm 1.4 was my love lens, the 35 1.4 I also loved a lot, the 50 1.4 is really really nice and now we have the 85mm 1.4 G Master 2. That makes for a dream combination if you have the money and if you shoot within the Sony ecosystem. I didn't notice any chromatic aberrations in this lens in form of colorful contrast edges, so no lateral chromatic aberrations. They are very well controlled, even with backlit portraits. There's nothing to criticize here. However, longitudinal chromatic aberrations, shortly loca, were reportedly a major issue with the predecessor. Also, with poor sharpness at close range, that resulted in very soft image with color shift in the foreground and background blur that was really, really noticeably and not that nice. That's not the case here. Loca is visible. Yes, that's no surprise for 1.4 lens. I personally haven't seen any that has no Loca. But it's not problematic in this lens. It's very little Loca. The sharpness is fine and by f2 the Loca is completely gone. What's really impressive to me is the bokeh, as it should. After all, it's the main reason for buying an 85mm lens, to isolate your subject and separate it from the background, which this lens does really, really well. In practice, the bokeh is smooth and very pleasant with beautiful transitions into and out of focus and no complaints. The separation potential is superb. Perfect for stunning portraits. I'm really impressed and it even did impress me more if I look at my test setup. While the GM1 struggled with pronounced cat eye bokeh towards the image edges, this new one looks fantastic. It's almost flawless. You can hardly expect more from an 85mm 1.4. That's really, really good here in the edges. Sigma's lens was also very good for bokeh, but, but as far as I remember, not this good. I'm simply impressed. And when stopped down, the cat's eye effect diminishes further and the bokeh circles remain pleasantly round if you need more depth of field. Vignetting is visible, but extremely good under control and in a pleasant range for such a fast lens. It actually is a little too less vignetting for me because this vignetting adds to the subject isolation in case of portrait shots, I would prefer to keep or add vignetting rather than correcting it. Where the lens really shines is distortion. There is none, not at all. And this sets the G Master 2 apart from the Sigma where the distortion was my main complaint. I have never seen such strong distortion in the 85mm lens before than in the Sigma. G Master 2 is optically perfectly corrected with no need for additional software correction profiles for distortion or vignetting and it delivers stunning results in this regard but of course that comes at a price. Sony has always been good at handling backlit situations. You might see some flares when the light source is almost exactly in the frame but not otherwise. Ghosting is almost non-existent with this lens and contrast loss in direct backlit situations is minimal. However, at maximum aperture with the right angle to the light source, say the sun, you might encounter large flares like this here and a rainbow effect following or in front of the flare. It's not exactly pretty, but not a deal breaker either. You have to be quite unlucky or provoke it on purpose to see it. And some people might even find this effect attractive. If you shoot against low angle sunlight backlit situations, you shouldn't have many problems with this new G Master 2. Yeah, I've already mentioned the autofocus of the old G Master, which wasn't as fast as modern lenses due to the SSM autofocus motor. Still, it wasn't an issue for portraits, just maybe too slow for fast children, animals or sports. Hmm. The GM2 comes with two XD linear voice coil motors for fast silent autofocus. In my case, the focus accuracy was perfect, locking onto the eyes flawlessly, even at 61 megapixels. But one downside, which was already expected, is that the lens is again less suitable for video like all the other Sony Prime lenses. It shows noticeable focus briefing, meaning a change in focal length when focusing. This can be distracting when focus pulling. However, it's manageable. 
If it bothers you, the camera can correct it with a small crop. It's just something, something you need to accept with Sony's photo prime lenses and Sigmas as well. Overall, there's very, very little to complain about here. You get a lot of lens for a lot of money with few compromises. The only real ones are the breathing and the potential with the flare in certain situations. Everything else is optically top notch. Sharpness, CAs, bokeh, vignetting, distortion, top tier, first class. If this 1.4 prime lens were priced closer to the 50 1.4 or the 35 1.4, it would likely find even more buyers. Sigma's 85mm 1.4 isn't that much worse. The only clear disadvantage is the distortion. But other than that, you wouldn't go wrong with either lens. However, it doesn't have that G Master badge, nor the potentially flawless, perfectly perfect autofocus when it matters most. So, to be fair, I didn't have any issues with the autofocus of the Sigma back then either. But what do you personally think? Would the GM2 be something for you? Or would you rather opt for a cheaper alternative? Let me know in the comments down below. Whichever way you decide, you will find links to the Sony 85mm 1.4 G Master 2 in the video description down below. And if you purchase through these links, you will support this channel for free, helping me continue to make videos like this for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. And here are some more videos you can check out now. That's it from me from the vision today and see you next time.